Good day, grade 12. My name is Kaden Mazzokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. And welcome to one of my lessons. In this series of lessons, I'm going to be explaining uh, graphs. So I'll start with graphs on perfect competition. I'll do monopoly, all that stuff. And then when I'm done with microeconomics graphs, I'll also do eco uh, uh, graphs on macroeconomics. I'll do the likes of the Phillips curve, the Laffa curve, all that stuff. Even foreign exchange, we'll talk about graphs, everything. So uh, this whole playlist, you'll see it'll be uh, graphs all over. Okay, so in this particular lesson, my focus is on economic loss for a perfect competitor. So let's get started. All right, the first thing I want to point out is that when you draw a graph, make sure that um, you, 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 you level every single line that you draw. Well, these lines, um, the, 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 we have our lines of axis and we also have our curves. And uh, our curves don't have to curve. They can be straight. It's a curve, like a demand curve. It's straight, but we call it a curve. So whenever you draw a demand curve, level D, Whenever you draw a supply curve, S, a marginal cost curve, MC, like that. That's what I mean. So you level on your axis, you level inside the graph. All right. Um, I just had to give that emphasis because learners lose a lot of marks by not doing that. Now, to get started, uh, I see people draw graphs differently and some draw them in a very, very weird way a way that shows that lack of understanding. So he, uh, I'm going to show you how you should do it. Uh, and and uh, this is the correct way because this way you can sort of tell a story. You can say, this is what's happening. And um, it, it, it builds up and it makes a lot of sense than just to start by giving us something that we actually wonder, where did you get it from? That way it shows that you are just cramming, you don't even know what's going on. So the first thing that we have to know, where is this thing, is the price. Okay, now since, I probably I didn't mention, but this is for the individual producer, right? So since this is the individual producer, we all know that in a perfectly competitive market, individuals are price takers. So where are they taking the prices from? Well, I'll just draw something uh, on the side here very quick. Well, this would be the uh, demand curve for the uh, industry, the entire industry. So this will be our demand curve, downward sloping. This will be our supply curve, upward sloping. Where these two forces intersect, we'll call this the point of equilibrium. So we normally put an E there. And uh, the price I want to work with is 5 rand. So market forces of demand and supply, uh, in this case, as you can see, they have caused the price to be five rand. So since this is an individual and this individual takes the market price, they, then uh, it will look, his demand curve will look horizontal. And the, the, it being horizontal is an indication that he is a price taker. And the correct term, uh, instead of, okay, yes, it is correct to say it's a horizontal demand curve, but we also say this demand curve is perfectly elastic. If it was perfectly inelastic, it would be, it would look like this. It would go down like this. So this one is perfectly elastic. And uh, so it also indicates that the, this individual is a price taker. He, uh, the, the quantity that he produces if he decides to sell 100 units, that will not affect the market price because this individual is a very, very, very small, uh, uh, well, well, maybe let me not put it that way. Let me say his influence is too small. He cannot influence. Uh, just think about, uh, well, the, the weird example I always give is that it's more like going to the ocean and then you pee in the ocean uh, and then you expect to see the level of water rising because of your urine. Well, your urine is insignificant. It won't 
increase the level of water in an ocean. So the same applies. No matter if the individual producer produces hundred, a thousand, that's still too small in as far as the market is concerned, because the market is way bigger than one individual producer producing apples. Because there are way too many other firms producing the same product and they'll sell it for the market price of five rand and uh, consumers are, uh, have perfect information and all that stuff. So without wasting much of your time, uh, the, the, so the first thing we are saying here is that the individual producer is a price taker and he, so that means he cannot make decisions when it comes to pricing. However, when it comes to quantity, this particular individual has to make a decision himself. He doesn't take the quantity from the industry. He has to come up with the quantity. Now, the, to, 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 to determine then how many units to produce, this individual has to first uh, apply a rule uh, because this rule has to be applied because that's the goal of each and every business out there. And the goal is to maximize profit. So to maximize profit, this firm has to abide by the profit maximizing rule, which states that uh, for a firm to maximize profit, it has to produce at the profit maximizing point. And which point is that? It's a point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. I can do a video uh, explaining this concept. Uh, at this point in time, I'll just end it there as a rule. It's a rule. All right. So from there, um, w since I said it's a point where MC intersects MR, marginal cost intersects marginal revenues. That means as we tell our story, the next curve that we are going to introduce is the marginal cost curve. As you can see here, uh, it then intersects the marginal revenue curve there. Yes, it, this curve is also the demand curve. It's also the average revenue curve, but these two have no significance in as far as profit maximizing is concerned. So we don't even mention them. So we don't say MC intersects DARMR because these two have no significance to the point that we are making, but the marginal revenue curve is the one that has significance. So what does that point do? Well, as you can see, this point, then the quantity that the firm produces has to correspond with this point here. So we simply draw a line. Uh, okay, first, yes, that's our point. In this case, I called it E. Uh, also to uh, present, uh, for it to present an opportunity to explain. Well, I put E intentionally because I want people to, to well, not everyone, obviously, People to think I'm saying equilibrium, but no, uh, the E is just a name. I'm just labeling the point, but it's not really equilibrium in this case. This is the profit maximizing point. And you'll see this is a hard question. They ask it all the time. Unfortunately, it's only for one mark, but the question always comes, uh, identify the profit maximizing point. In this point, in this case, it will be point E. All right. So what does that point give us? It gives us the profit maximizing output or quantity. And in this case, our profit maximizing output is 10 rand, uh, is 10 units. OK, now with this in mind, the firm is maximizing its profit at 10 units and it's selling whatever it is that it makes at five rand. So can we say that this firm is making an economic profit, an economic loss or a normal profit? Well, the answer to the question is we don't know. Um, we don't know because we, we don't know uh, how much it costs this firm to make a single unit. Well, why do we say we don't know? Because there's nothing that's telling us the cost per unit. Uh, marginal cost is actually the cost incurred for producing one additional unit. It's not, so it doesn't really tell us anything in as far as profit or loss is concerned. The marginal cost is there to inform us the profit maximizing point. When it comes to profit or loss, we have to introduce the average cost curve and take note the, 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 the shape, it's U-shaped uh, as you can see it here. The next thing I want to point out is that 
always the marginal cost curve when you draw make sure it cuts the ac at its lowest point what i mean by that look here this is our average cost curve it's high it's high it's going down it's going down now it's at its lowest point right there where it's uh, where it is at its lowest point it that's where it intersects the marginal cost curve you see you, they'll never intersect here if you see it like that it's wrong uh, so make sure it always cuts it at its lowest point. And it's one of the things that you can find in an exam. Uh, so take note. Now, from here, um, you see our average cost is high. It's low. It's high. So what's the, 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 the quantity here? Uh, what, what's the amount? How much does it cost to produce 10 units? To get the answer to that, look here, we have 10 units. We don't care about the cost here because here it will be maybe at unit number five. Yes, it costs this much to produce the fifth unit. Yes, it produced this much to produce the seventh unit. But we don't care about the seventh or whatever. We care about the tenth unit. So what we do is we proceed with our line until we get to the AC. Then from there, that's where we can get the cost, uh, not per unit, but the cost for 10 units on average. So there we have it there. So in this particular case, it costs this firm 10 rand to make whatever it is that it's making, and it sells it for 5 rand. Now, some of you may ask, why would a firm do that? Why would they continue producing? And, um, well, the answer is also in the shutdown rule, which is a concept that I'm going to introduce in this series of lessons. So you just need to continue watching these videos until you get to the shutdown point. If you understand all this, then just jump to the video that talks about the shutdown point. But in this, well, but what I can say is that, well, the mere fact that the firm is making an economic loss does not... Uh, mean the firm should shut down the firm should in that case should sh apply the shutdown rule which says that a firm should only consider sh shutting down if it cannot cover its variable costs so there is another curve that is called the average variable cost curve that we have to introduce in order for us to answer that question but in this case yes this firm is making an economic loss of five rand per unit and it's not really good enough uh, well we cannot tell whether this firm should shut down or not for us to tell that we we need to introduce like what i'm saying the shutdown rule well so i think um this brings us to the end of the lesson but we usually have to uh shade this area that is our economic loss as you can see here and uh, we can also prove that it's an economic loss. And the way we do that is we can do it by just simply saying average revenue minus average cost. Well, in this case, it will be what is our average revenue? Look here. It's five rand. And what is our average cost? AC. Look here. Our average cost here is. 10 rand so basically it's we are saying 5 minus 10 is equal to negative 5 so uh, this negative 5 informs us that the firm is making an economic loss of negative 5 rand per unit and then how many units are being sold they are selling 10 units and um so basically point e it will be more correct to actually call it the loss minimizing point because any output other than 10 units, this firm will, will not be able to minimize its, its losses. So this way it makes the least loss it can make. And then you'll be surprised that they will be open tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Yes, there are rules that uh, have to be followed in economics. This firm, this firm can, can really survive even if it's making an economic loss, is not really a big deal. They, there are other rules to be put in. Um, well, let me not explain too much. That will be in that particular video. Uh, if you have questions, uh, we have the comments section down below. Please put your comments down there, and I'm going to answer you uh, 
because uh, I do read those comments every now and then. Thank you so much and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.